Hello, it's a lovely good evening. Welcome to Cabinet Television Main News. I'm Jeffrey Ziambo to present the news. Top stories in the news tonight. Former President Edgar Lungu's Baba convicted for murder as Mumbi Piri gets a nole prosequi. FDD leader Edith Nawakwi accuses President Hagainde Hichilema of being vengeful in justice dispensation. Government continues to warn former President Edgar Lungu for getting involved in politics. In international news, Raila Odinga calls for talks to involve parties outside parliament in Kenya. And in sports news, fires to stage All-Stars versus the rest for Afghan bound under 17. Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage, ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner. Another news in detail. Zambia Anti-Tribalism Youth Association, Zatio Chairperson Joshua Sondashi, has urged the Zambia police to exercise impartiality when dealing with reports of tribalism if to curb this vice. Commenting on the arrest of Lumezi Member of Parliament, Munia Zulu, who was arrested on Tuesday on alleged tribal remarks made on 28th March 2023, Mr. Sondashi notes that while the arrest is welcome, the organization has been reporting various incidences with, vi with evidence but says no arrests have been made to date. Lumezi Member of Parliament, Munia Zulu, was on Tuesday, 4th April 2023, arrested in accordance with Section 70, Cap 1 of the Penal Code, Chapter 87 of the Laws of Zambia, which prohibits expressing or showing hatred, ridicule, or contempt for persons because of race, tribe, place of origin, or color. The arrest is in line with alleged sentiments that the lawmaker made on the 28th of March 2023 at Long Acres Police Post after his release that villagers from Lumezi were better than those from Wengwa. As an organization, we have uh, been uh, reporting these matters to Zambia Police. Um, and we reported so many, in fact, during the, the past uh, elections. Now it happens to be like uh, the perpetrators by then we are in the ruling party, but at the moment the perpetrators seems to be in uh, opposition. So this matter, after receiving that uh, this person uh, was uh, arrested, we are not surprised. We are expecting the, that the government will do the work. Now, the request from the organizations that um, uh, these people, the law enforcers, should balance. We don't want to see the situation where only those in the opposition are the one the law is uh, working on. Law is law and no one is above the law. Let it be even to those who are out of politics and uh, those who are in the ruling party, because we want to see a Zambia which is free of tribalism, a country which is uh, full of peace, love and unity. Former Patriotic Front Deputy Secretary General Mumbi Piri has walked to freedom after the state entered Endole Prosequi. Wednesday, Senior State Advocate Kayoka Sifali, on behalf of the Director of Public Prosecutions, discontinued, discontinued the case against her. Ms. Piri was co-accused with President Edgar Lungu's Baba Shabi Chilekwa for the murder of the United Party for National Development member Lawrence Banda, an incident which happened during the 2019 Council Chairperson by-election in Kaoma, Western Province. Meanwhile, former President Edgar Lungu's Baba Shabi Chilekwa has been convicted of murder. More in this report. After a year in detention, former Patriotic Front Deputy Secretary General Mumbi Piri has been set free after the state entered a non prosecute in a murder case where she was jointly charged with former President Edgar Lungu's barber, Shabi Chilekwa. Accusations before the court were that on October 6, 2019, Mrs. Piri, 
and Shabi Chilekwa whilst acting together murdered Lawrence Banda in Kaoma district during the run-up to the council chairperson by election. And when the matter came up for judgment Wednesday 5th April 2023 in Mongu, senior state advocate Kayoka Sifari authorized for proceedings against Mumbipiri to be discontinued. Miss Piri and Mr. Chilekwa were arrested in February 2022. Legal counsel Makebi Zulu is disappointed that the state opted to enter a nolle prosecute in a case they failed to prove the accused wrong. Do was to let the judge read his judgment and acquit her accordingly because we are convinced everybody knows, everybody followed the proceedings and everybody knows that Mumbi Piri was never at the scene and Mumbi Piri is innocent. Mumbi Piri is going to walk with her head high. With her head high because no evidence was brought in court against her. Against her. However, we have witnessed a travesty of justice in this country in that where a pronouncement was to be made as to her not being guilty, as to her innocence, the state comes in quickly to stop that. We can only wonder as to why that is so. But our sure guess is that they obviously don't want us to take out a matter against the state for malicious prosecution. Patriotic Front Vice President Given Lubinda expressed a disappointment over the outcome of the case. How do we know what the judgment is? What about if the judge found that Mumbi Piri is innocent? The judge had already completed writing his judgment. And the state decides we're going to enter a nolle. It is clear to anybody who has any gray matter that the state themselves knew that there are no case against Mumbi Piri. It, it goes without any say that the state were not convinced with the evidence that they adduced against Mumbi Piri. And this is just a smoke screen to hide their shame. And other senior PF party officials shared their views. Speaking on behalf of my family, I want every Zambian to know the injustice that many people are going through in this country. Every statement that the president of this republic makes, he speaks against the fact that he was arrested. If in fact it was painful for him, he should not repeat this vindictive attitude that he has been portraying since he was, since he was voted into office. Patrick Soko, Cabinet News. Meanwhile, Forum for Democracy and Development, FDD leader Edith Nawakwe, has accused President Hagainde Hichilema of having a hand in the arrest and prosecution of former Patriotic Front Deputy Secretary General Mumbi Piri. In an exclusive interview, Ms. Nawakwe charges that the head of state is vindictive as seen in the unfair justice system toward Ms. Piri. She says President Hichilema does not mean well for the country looking at his continued interference in the delivery of the justice system. He adds that the head of state is being destroyed by those surrounding him and keeps making wrong decisions. What they've done to Mumbi Piri is a travesty of justice. Hakainde was revenging on all the statements that were being made during the campaign. He decided that he was going to revenge on one so, and that so is Mumbi Piri. I have told people that this Haka Inde is very vindictive and vengeous. You can see what has happened. They realized by last night, maybe, I don't know how their systems work, they realized that he, probably Mumbi was going to be acquitted today. And then they rush, stepping in all sorts of mud, all sorts of dirty places, and then they've actually messed themselves up because everyone knows that this is Haka Inde's hand, this is what he's doing. If he can't twist the arms of other people in other departments, then he uses his office. I can assure you that this didn't come without the support of his legal advisor, who, what is his name, at Mundi, at the State House. You know, cage these boys. The people voted for you. They didn't vote for these young people around you. But you are being destroyed by them, 
and you are being destroyed by your inability to listen to advice. And civil rights activist Brebna Changala has described as abuse of authority by the executive in a move by the executive to enter a nolle prosequi in a murder trial involving former Patriotic Front Deputy Secretary General Mumbi Piri. Mr. Changala has demanded that judgment on Mumbi Piri be delivered. He says it is tantamount to abuse of power for the court to enter a nolle prosequi on the day of judgment, thus demanding judgment passed on Ms. Piri to avoid her moving in the streets with a murder case pending on her back. Here's a report. Former Patriotic Front Deputy Secretary General Mumbi Piri was arrested alongside former President Edgar Lungus Baba Shabi Chilekwa in connection to the death of United Party for National Development UPND Kada Lawrence Banda, who was shot in Kaoma District during a political activity. She testified having witnessed a crime, a move that landed her in problems. And me, I was there in Kaoma. I was there, I saw that how that man moved from his side who were blocked our side to steal a handbag. In the process, that's how he was caught, he was caught in the crossfire. Her arrest and subsequent prolonged detention pending trial raised concerns among politicians, civil society organizations, rights activists and the church. Over a year, Ms. Piri has been in detention and Wednesday 5th April 2023 was the day of judgment and the state opted to enter a nolle prosecute. But this has not been well received by many people, including civil rights activist Brebna Changala, who believes the move is tantamount to abuse of authority by the executive. Mr. Changala has since demanded that judgment must be passed so that the accused can be aware of a definite fate. Beneath the state has the mandate as the power, as the authority, this is total abuse. It's ill-timed and the perception is that Mumbipiri was going to be acquitted. So they decided to arrest the, ju the judgment before it could be delivered. That is abuse of state power. They arrested Mumbipiri in a dramatic way, taken her to a place where she does not stay, kept her there in isolation, in confinement, for close to a year plus, if not two years, only to dramatically enter a nole on a day that should, she should have known, and indeed the entire nation, of what she had done. He is disappointed that what has happened to Miss Piri is an upfront to justice to sue the state for compensation, just like many other high profile people who were wrongfully prosecuted by the previous government have been doing. Because the case is not over, according to the meaning of the knowledge. It's not over. So, what is the next stage? And a person like me who has eight knowledge, I don't even know how to discharge them. It's academic and I've forgotten about them. One is unable even to claim compensation. So that lady has been abused by the state. And most importantly, abused by the executive. So Mumbipiri must receive a judgment, not a knowledge. That's a demand. Patrick Soko. Calmnet News in Musaka. In other news, United Party for National Development, UPND Namala Member of Parliament, Mono Mapani, has rubbished Zambia must, proper, must prosper leader Kelvin Fuwebuali's remarks that President Hagainde Hichilema feels threatened whenever people are talking of former President Edgar Lungu's name. Mr. Mapani has defended President Hagainde Hichilema, saying he has no qualms with former, former President Edgar Lungu. Mr. Mapani tells Kamnet News in an interview that the former president has to battle it out with his conscience for treating President Hichilema the way he did while he was, in, he was an opposition leader. The parliamentarian is convinced that the president has no, in, and has no intentions to revenge what he went through when he was in the opposition, saying his interest is to deliver the campaign promises he made to the Zambian people.
we have a country to learn, which requires seriousness, and that people should sell above board. If HH indeed was a better person, today we were not going to talk about Mr. Lungu or Dr. Lungu to buy his house. Never. And HH was not going to respect the rule of law the way they did it. We had where an individual would make an, a, a pronouncement and the next day you hear the president of the opposition party who has been arrested is arrested. Because to them, a constitution was nothing. But because we were founded on a firm foundation of democracy, which is applying the rule of law and the ten all the tenets of good governance even. If HH indeed wanted to be bitter because of what they did to him, the PF, a lot of them would have been chooks by now. Now here's the person who is forgiving. Here's the person who immediately, when he came out of prison, made pronouncements, which up to now is still stands on them, that he shall never revenge. He shall never learn this country based on what he thinks, but he shall learn this country based, first of all, from the on Christian values and the, from the dictates of the constitution. And people of this country are supposed to be proud of such a, having such a president. Because these things are not easy. There are a lot of issues that or claims that were committed by the previous regime. But today, or to date, we are still together in the streets of Lusaka. Yes, they appear in court, but some not. Because investigations are still being conducted. Southern Province Minister Cornelius Mwetua says government is doing everything possible to address the issue of millimeter smuggling to neighboring countries. Mr. Mwetua, who is also UPND party spokesperson, has partly blamed millers for the skyrocketing millimeter prices and shortages. He says Zambia is the only country producing white non-genetically modified organisms grade 1 maize, which is in high demand. Mr. Mwetua states that Zambians should not view the shortage of millimil in the country as a crisis, but as an opportunity to scale up production. He has encouraged young people to start farming and contribute to the food basket of the nation as a measure to scale up maize production. Doing everything reasonably possible to ensure national food security and uh, particularly to do with uh, availability of millimil. But it has to be understood that uh, the sale of minimum has been left to the private sector. Government is not involved in the production and the uh, retail of minimum. That is uh, for the private sector. All government is doing is to ensure that uh, sufficient grain stocks are in place for national uh, food security through FRA. And this is what has been happening, that FRA has been releasing uh, you know, uh, sufficient grain to the millers. The challenge we are having now is not that we don't have enough minimum in the country. The challenge we are having is that the region does not have enough minimum. Zambia is the only country in the region producing um, white non-GMO grade one maize, which is on high demand in the region. So what we are talking about here is trade. And in terms of trade, when you have a commodity that is on high demand, the supply side of it is likely uh, to be stressed. This is what is happening. So as we experience uh, some of these uh, minimum shortages, we must be asking ourselves what should we do next. We must romp up scale up production because this should not be viewed just as a crisis it should be viewed as an opportunity we must be able to tell many of our young people who are holed up here in town in kanyama in misisi in tendere uh, many of them engaged in non-productive activities to go back to the land A state witness failed to appear before the Lusaka Magistrate Court to testify in a case Economic and Equity Party leader Chilufia Tayali is accused of attempting to seduce military personnel from their duty. 
when the matter came up for commencement of trial Wednesday. The, the prosecution informed the court that the witness who, witnesses who were scheduled to testify in the case are out of jurisdiction. This is in a matter in which Mr. Tayali is facing one count of inciting mutiny contrary to Section 48 of the Penal Code, Chapter 47 of the Laws of Zambia. More in this report. The Lusaka's Magistrate Court heard Wednesday morning that witnesses scheduled to testify in the case in which opposition leader Chilfitali is accused of attempting to seduce military personnel from their duty failed to make it before court. Wednesday, Mr. Tali, the leader of Economic and Equity Party, was scheduled to commence his trial. However, after making an appearance before the Lusaka Magistrate Court, the prosecution team informed the court that they were not ready to proceed with the matter. The state indicated that the witnesses who were supposed to appear and testify in this matter this morning were out of jurisdiction. This is in a matter in which Mr. Tali is facing one count of inciting mutiny contrary to Section 48 of the Penal Code, Chapter 47 of the Laws of Zambia. Particulars of the offense alleges that Mr. Tali, between the 1st to the 4th of April 2022, attempted to seduce persons serving in the Defense Force from their duty and allegiance to the President by writing on his Facebook page. According to the court record, Mr. Tali, without lawful excuse, he received an official classified Zambia Army message in contravention of the State Security Act and later circulated the document on social media. The accused had alleged on his Facebook page that the soldiers who used to get paid on time were now calling on him to speak for them. Mr. Tali, who is currently on police bond, was arrested last year on the alleged offense by the police. Trial starts on the 15th of May, 2023. Miriam Kaimba, reporting for Kamne TV News. Minister of Information and Media, Chosheka Kasanda, has described as misplaced sentiments by leader of the opposition in parliament, Brian Mondoile, that uh, United States of America Vice President Kamala Harris, who recently visited Zambia, should have paid a, a visit to former President Edgar Lungo, as he is the only surviving former president and father of the nation. Responding to a question from the media Wednesday morning during a press briefing, Ms. Cassandra states that the former president actually risks losing his retirement benefits if he does not make his stance clear on whether he is still in active politics or not. The Minister of Information and Media observes that the head of state has been mute on his the former head of state has been mute on his political stance while allowing uh, while alleging that his own political party the opposition patriotic front has declared that he is still in active politics. More in this report. A lot of controversy has surrounded the visit by United States of America Vice President Kamala Harris, who visited Zambia on 31st March to 1st April 2023, as her visit has resulted in political tension between the opposition and the ruling United Party for National Development, UPND. While her visit was previously opposed, as she was accused of trying to push for gay and lesbian rights, the opposition patriotic front, which was in the forefront opposing her coming, has cried foul, stating that she did not visit former President Edgar Lungu, despite him being the only surviving former Zambian president and having peacefully handed over power to the current administration. Responding to the sentiments during a media address Wednesday morning, Minister of Information and Media Chushika Sanda says the former head of state does not present himself as a statement but as an opposition leader. Hence, the UPND did not see it fit for the U.S. Vice President to meet him as it would mean that she had to meet all opposition leaders. Ms. Kassanda has further challenged the former head of state to come out in the open on his stance in politics if to enjoy his retirement benefits. So if we had him or if we had uh, Kamala Harris visit the former president, that means we should, we should have opened it up to every other person that calls themselves mm. presidents. We should have taken her to Shontem, we should have taken her to Chilufia Tayali. So because of that, it was not possible. His party has declared that he's uh, in politics, but he has not fully come out and declared it himself. So when one declares that they are back in politics and they are no longer uh, uh, ready to enjoy the fruits of what they worked for, then they are stripped of their, what, they, what they've been enjoying. That's simply what it is. So 
um, I think uh, would also get more feedback on the same from uh, the Minister of uh, Justice. Meanwhile, Minister of Technology and Science Felix Mutati, who was speaking at the same press briefing, states that President Hakainda Hichilema's recent visit to Doha, Qatar, will bring many benefits to Zambia, including high-speed internet to also cover all secondary schools, as well as job creation. So the jobs, the jobs will be countless. The jobs will be countless as a consequence of bringing this investment. When we provide internet to the 1,200 schools, we'll be lifting up the skills of our teachers, probably retraining them. But others we may have to recruit to supplement Mr. Mutati says the coming development shows that the president's visits are not misplaced, but are meant to bring national development. Ziporam Shala, Kamet News, Lusaka. Lawyers representing the opposition Patriotic Front in a case in which a Lusaka businessman Walia Kalandana has sued the party demanding 13.5 million kwacha have indicated their intention to withdraw as advocates citing failure by the party to pay for legal fees. According to an affidavit filed before the Lusaka High Court, Shupa Chipompela, an advocate from Tutua S. Ngulube and Company, has submitted that since the demise of late Tutua Ngulube, the law firm has insufficient funds to continue carrying out operations and efforts to have the party settle its outstanding legal fees have been in vain. More in this report. In the latest twist of events, the opposition Patriotic Front Party may not have any lawyer representing them in a matter in which they have been sued by a Lusaka businessman, Walia Kalandanya. Following the decision by lawyers representing them to file an application before the High Court to withdraw their service, According to an affidavit filed before court, Shupach Pompela, an advocate from Tutuanguluwe and Company, has cited failure by the party to pay for legal fees. The party lawyers have submitted that since the demise of late Tutuanguluwe, the law firm has insufficient funds to continue carrying out operation and efforts to have the party settle its outstanding legal fees has been in vain. The lawyers have further submitted before court that they have not received instruction to continue representing the party, despite several reminders. This is in a matter in which Mr. Walia Kalandanya sued the opposition Patriotic Front Party demanding 13.5 million kwacha owned to him for the campaign songs which were produced by the remote choir prior to the 2021 general elections. The plaintiff is demanding damages for breach of contract which was signed between the PF and his record label, Kalandanya Music Promotion. He has cited PF Acting Secretary General Nixon Chilangwa and alleges that between April and May 2021, he was approached by the former ruling party to produce, promote and develop campaign songs, political advert which it would use during the campaign period to promote its agenda. However, the opposition party has failed to honor its promise. Miriam Kaimba, reporting for Kamne TV News. Join us for more news after the break. Come on, everybody, get your feet happy. Let's go, come on. This is the... From the 7th of April to 9th of April 2023, we invite you to the gathering of Wise Men Conference to be hosted by Pastor Wesley Manasseh, guest speaker from Lesotho Dr. Raphael Banda and Professor Apostle Erison Chileshe from Zambia. Time 13 30 hours to 19 hours, venue Barak Ministries International, opposite Football House along Danikure Road, Mass Media Area. Lusaka. This year's conference is inspired by the theme Saving God's Purpose in New Generation. No one should be left out. We invite you all. I trust. Say it. Show me how to do it, y'all. In our quest to save nations and develop Africa, Savenda is investing in the agriculture sector so as to produce supply for both local and international markets. 
housing over 12,000 pullets that are nurtured and fed with our locally made stock feed that comes from our own locally grown maize and soya beans, all processed from our recently installed milling and mixing plant. Our over 95,000 layers have an output capacity of over 1,500 trays of fresh eggs per day that are carefully selected and packaged for all the leading stores and supermarkets nationwide. Our greenhouses are fitted with the latest irrigation system and the seedlings are nurtured to ensure only healthy plants reach the fields. With our deliberate planting schedule, we are better placed to supply constantly without interruption, thus reliable. Savenda Farms is also changing lives of its dedicated workforce drawn from the local community and beyond. So the next time you think fresh and green, think Savenda Farms. Your skin is the biggest muscle in your body. That's why we make sure that Oracle is number one when it comes to taking care of your precious skin. Oracle Pure Petroleum Jelly and Glycerin soothes, moisturizes and keeps your skin perfect. Oracle Pure Petroleum Products for that perfect skin. Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage, ensuring a high yield. Renglo, your smart irrigation partner. We'll continue with the news. The civil servants and allied workers union of Zambia has called for enhanced performance audits in the civil service with a focus on those in senior positions to ensure that the civil service works with the government of the day. Speaking to Cabinet News Union General Secretary Makai Makai says sentiments by President Hakainde Hichilema that some civil servants are working against the government of the day do not make good reading as the civil service is supposed to be nonpartisan. President Hakainde Hichilema on Monday, 3rd April 2023, during a swearing-in ceremony of ambassadors, high court and constitutional court judges at State House while urging the new appointees to exercise professionalism, indicated that the current administration is currently struggling with a few officers that they inherited in government. More in this report. In any democracy, the civil service or the public sector as it is mostly referred to is expected to be loyal to the government of the day and help in carrying out its vision, hence the emphasis that all civil servants should keep their political affiliation personal and ensure that it does not affect their delivery. Civil servants who have been accused of trying to sabotage the government of the day have therefore over the years been retired on national interest. During the tenure of the former ruling Patriotic Front, which lost power to the ruling United Party for National Development in 2021, Reports of political infiltration in the civil service were high, as well as allegations of political party cadres harassing some civil servants that were accused of having a different political preference. The Civil Servants and Allied Workers Union of Zambia, SAUS, has therefore called for enhanced performance audits to ensure that civil servants are working with the government of the day. Union General Secretary Makai Makai, was speaking in reference to a statement by President Hakainda Hichilema on Monday during a swearing-in ceremony that some officers are being problematic. I just want to call upon the government to bring in now the issues of audits, performance audits, where if you are given targets and you fail to reach those targets, then you part come back because what we want is to see accelerated development in this country. And the people can provide that accessibility development. It's us as civil servants because we are employed to save this country. Now, if we, some of the people are still in the past where they feel they can sabotage the government, I think we shall not allow that in the union. So, we just want to call government to quicken their steps in making sure that they do a quick performance audit, especially to senior management, because these are the people who are next to the ministers. These are the people who are next to the, the permanent secretaries, and these are the people who 
who are carrying the vision of the president, who are carrying the vision of the party in power. He has also reminded civil servants on the need not to flaunt a political affiliation or allow it to affect their performance. And uh, therefore, it calls, we call, want to call upon our, our civil servants in this country to remember who they are and pay allegiance to the country. Of course, we know that coming from the past, uh, the civil service was is at some point very compromised. Political influence came, crept in, and the civil servants were practicing politics openly. Some heads of departments, some directors, and the people in senior positions were seen by the citizens playing politics. He hopes that the measures will help in restoring professionalism to the civil service and return its lost glory. Ziporam Shala, Kamet News, Lusaka. The Chona Kayola Road of Chona Ward in Monze's Momba constituency has, for the first time in over five decades, seen a facelift after the local authority contracted the Zambia National Service ZNS to work on the road using the constituency development funds CDF. Council Public Relations Officer Kanchele Kanchele has told the media that the project, which commenced in January 2023, will cost 3.3 million kwacha and involves bush clearing, grading, and graveling of the 20 kilometer stretch. He said for a long period, the people of Chona would have cried for the roads to be worked on, but that funds as well as the lack of equipment by the local authority made it difficult. And Kaila Momba, who is village headman Hamanonga, has thanked government for responding to the cries of Kayola villagers through grading the road that has been in bad state since time immemorial. Mutinta McDonald, who is also village headman Chawa Chobana, has also thanked the New Dawn administration through their area member of parliament, Fred Chatila, who has responded so quickly and contracted ZNS to upgrade Kayola Road in order to help users. Mr. Kanchale noted that the increment in the CDF allocation by the New Dawn government has started bearing fruits as can be seen from the road project in Momba constituency. We must uh, mention that uh, uh, we are happy uh, that the New Dawn government was able to increase CDF from what it used to be to almost 30 million now, which is making it possible and making it easy for us to uh, provide services such as uh, uh, the one we are talking about. <laughs> Oro <laughs> Yaya <laughs> state muyabete titwari uyo hawinda gabota myoto gara so twarumbaga pati kutubambira rodo oyo perepesi tujirombo yauti kabaji zumana na alime kutubambira ko zapfuba ga simpira ku mbogo site ko bati urweta bazumana ne ku yakusimira kutamba kiwa haja anga ku yakunka ku yakumonzi we take a second and final break join us for more news in international sports news after the break Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage, ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner.
Kamnet TV, in collaboration with Kawama Orphanage, invites you for a two day music festival on the 29th and 30th of April 2023. Time 10 30 hours to 18 hours. Venue Kamnet Grounds, opposite Hilltop Hospital in Kabulonga. Musical host Ruben. Charges 250 kwacha VIP, 100 kwacha ordinary, and 50 kwacha children. Get your tickets at Compute Tickets. Come, let us support this orphanage together. And now in international news, Raila Odinga has called for parties outside parliament to be involved in talks on electoral reform and the high cost of living. The Kenyan opposition leader's call is at odds with President William Ruto's plan for negotiations to be held only within parliament. On Tuesday, Odinga warned of fresh protests if the government did not take demands of the opposition seriously. He had earlier agreed Sunday to the talks proposed by Ruto after the president asked him to hold protests of a rising cost of living and claims of fraud in last August presidential election. For two weeks, thousands took part in three opposition marches, causing some unrest and chaos across the East African country, all of which turned violent. The protests left one police officer and four protesters dead. Businesses in the capital, Nairobi, were affected, and some looting took place during the demonstrations. Other businesses were forced to close twice last week as some private businesses and places of worship were burned down. The rising cost of living is also among the issues the opposition wants government to address. Here's a roundup of international news. Kenyan opposition leader Raila Odinga has called for parties outside parliament to be involved in talks on electoral reform and the high cost of living at odds with President William Ruto's plan for negotiations to be held only within parliament. Odinga on Tuesday warned of fresh protests if the government did not take demands of the opposition seriously. On Sunday, the veteran opposition leader agreed to the talks proposed by Ruto after the president asked him to hold the protest. Thousands took part in three opposition marches over the past two weeks, all of which turned violent. Both local leaders and foreign observers have welcomed the talks to prevent further disruption in East Africa's largest economy. Kenya's president, William Ruto, has met with his Rwandan counterpart, Paul Kagame, to discuss the security situation in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, and the protest in Nairobi. The meeting on Tuesday was part of William Ruto's official two-day visit to Kigali on the invitation of President Paul Kagame, and also his first in Rwanda since he came to power last year in September. Last month has seen a lot of positive developments around the challenge of security in Eastern DRC, Ruto, standing alongside Kagame, told reporters in Kigali. So far, the Kenyan leader has met with leaders from Uganda, the DRC, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Tanzania and Burundi, in keeping with what he calls pursuit of good neighborliness. In flood hit Bentiu City in South Sudan, water hyacinths, a hated pest in many parts of the world, are proving an unlikely source of fuel as climate change reshapes the landscape. Hyacinth is gathered near the water's edge, dried under the sun and smoldered over a fire for about 20 minutes in the process to make charcoal. Since the floods came, it destroyed the forest, which was the source of the firewood we used to fetch and the charcoal we used to burn. That's when we were introduced to hyacinth charcoal, which is a better option. This collection or preparation of uh, what hyacinth charcoal is very easy than the collection of firewood. Because firewood is very far and you use both, they can hide it both for a lot of money. And also this wooden charcoal is very expensive. They transport it from different places, very far place. This what I send is very near. To the dike, they can even collect it without boat. They can just use something like rakes to collect it, simply like that, and then they put it in the sack and dry it for some days. At the moment, around 300 people, mostly women, are involved in producing the briquette. To overcome initial skepticism, public demonstrations were held.
WFP has been running a project where we use the invasive water hyacinth that chokes the waterways to make a type of co cooking fuel to reduce the consumption of wood-based charcoal. Now these sorts of things are absolutely critical going forward because it will help families live with the floodwaters that they now find around their communities. Prices for wood-based charcoal have soared in Bentu since the floods put in further strain on the local economy, desperately short on food and other essentials. It is hoped that once at scale, Iceland's briquettes could sell for about half the price of charcoal and provide much needed income for the women who sell them. We now have some sports news. The build-up to the 2023 20, Under-17 Africa Cup of Nations, AFCON, will see the Football Association of Zambia, FAS, stage an all-star versus the rest match at Nkoloma Stadium next Tuesday. Under-17 national team coach Ian Bakala will lead his all-stars team, while Aaron Kawangu will lead the rest team. The rest team will comprise players selected from the provinces by technical experts, with a panel of legends and technical experts tasked tass with screening the candidates. Among the technical experts expected to keep watch on the process are national team assistant coach Moses Sichone, 2012 Afghan winning skipper Christopher Katongo, Momba Ngandu, and 2012 Golden Boot winner Emmanuel Mayuka. Candidates featuring in this exhibition match will be required to be of the requisite age. CAF prescribes a magnetic resonance imaging MRI examination for participants at the under-17 Afghan. The under-17 AFCON will be held from April 29 to May 19 in Algeria, with Zambia in Group B alongside Nigeria, Morocco and South Africa. Kamen Stars has played to a goalless draw in a match played against Young Crocs out of Kamen Stars Kabulonga Boys Secondary School grounds. Speaking after post-match interviews, former First Lady Esther Lungu who went to support the lads has called all, all well-meaning Zambians to play a part in making Zambia a better place for the young people in various activities, among them sports. Longo says the young people should be empowered in activities such as sports. Minor Football Association of Zambia, Lusaka Province Representative Chilando, is happy the first family has continued to support young people in sports. The match was being played in Division 2, Week 28. <laughs> We are ardent football fans, me, my husband, and the entire family. So coming to support them today will not be the first time. I would like to commend the cabinet uh, executive, and that is uh, Pastor Chiluva Moses and Pastor Victoria Chiluva, for taking up this initiative to engage these boys, the young men, who may have been loitering in the streets with nothing to do, but giving them something to do. This is some form of empowerment, which we encourage every well-meaning Zambian to do so that our nation can develop. We are very grateful to Pastor Chiluba and the entire executive for what they are doing. And we are also grateful to FAS for supporting them in the sense that they are always present whenever they are, uh, the, the boys are playing the match. Well, thank you so much and uh, uh, please may you continue doing the same. This is leadership and uh, they say leadership does not end and this is mom what you have shot just to see you i think i saw even the mood of the game changed <laughs> and uh, the football association of zambia at lusaka province because this is where we fall under okay. and this league falls under lusaka football administration i'm chilando because the general deputy general secretary i'm so happy and uh, the moment when i was told that uh, you'll be here I couldn't even waste time to come so that we watch together. Thank you very much, ma'am.
was my pleasure. Thank you so much. May God bless you and continue using you people so that our young men can find something to do in their lives. That football note brings us to the end of our news. But before we go, the top stories once again. Former President Edgar Lungu's Baba convicted for murder as Mumbipiri gets a nole prosequi. FDD leader Edith Nawakwi accuses President Hagainde Hichilema of being vengeful in justice dispensation. Government continues to warn former President Edgar Lungu for getting involved in politics. In international news, Raila Odinga calls for talks to involve parties outside parliament in Kenya. And the sports fans to stage All Stars versus the rest for Afghan bound under 17. Our comment verse of the day is coming from Psalms 55, verse 16 to 17. I call to God, and the Lord saves me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and He hears my voice. Again, thank you for watching Come to Television News. I'm Jeffrey Ziambo. Bye bye.